Newcastle 3 1 Everton, Magpies out the bottom three with comeback win. This is what they paid the money for. Salvation. Survival. The chance to do it all again next season. Will this fixture be part of the calendar in 2022 23? That is what we do not know. It may be more a question for Everton than Newcastle now. It wasn't always pretty, not always silky, and at times rather tense. Yet Newcastle deserved their win, it vindicates their transfer window, and most importantly sucks Everton ever closer to the bottom three, and the void below. They were poor here, no doubt about it. Unlucky to lose three players before the hour to injury, Demarai Gray, Yeri Mina and Andre Gomez, but poor nonetheless. Newcastle too, were fortunate to keep 11 on when John Joe Shelby committed a horrible first half foul on Anthony Gordon. Yet they were the better team, created the best chances, and, having gone a goal down, showed enormous spirit to come back to win, particularly in the second half. That was when, attacking the Gallagate end, they pinned Everton back and scored twice. Good goals too. The first of them a little scrappy, but the second a cracker through Kieran Trippier. He was the most impressive of their January recruits, and this was a return to the form we remember for Tottenham and England. Not only did he score, he was involved in many of Newcastle's best opportunities. He was their best player on the night, a real class act. Newcastle's second goal, the one that got them ahead, was all about the maverick talent of an old favourite, Alan St. Maximin. He had not right to get a cross in of any kind from the left after 56 minutes, but somehow did, the ball taking a couple of deflections, before finding Ryan Frazier, who turned it into the net. No, not goal of the season. But a goal, that might turn the season here. It was Frazier who was fouled by Allen for what proved to be the clincher. Trippier stood over it and his shot, dipping, placed to perfection, left Jordan Pickford utterly defeated a third time. We can imagine where Newcastle are heading now, Bruno Gimmeries came on late, to a cheer almost as big as met the goals, but what of Everton? This was not a display, that will have given Frank Lampard great comfort. The body language wasn't that of a team regaining confidence, and the goal threat was barely existent. For now, these are clubs going in very different directions. Anyone who thinks Eddie Howe has the biggest challenge from here hasn't seen Everton. Judging by the number of new signing left on the bench, the intention from both managers was to ease their way into this game, to not put too much emphasis and pressure on a high-octane return to league action. John Joe Shelby pretty much put a stop to that. His foul on Anthony Gordon after 33 minutes pretty much lit the touch paper under this one. From then, until Anthony Taylor blew his half-time whistle, the game was played with a frantic intensity. There were two goals, both scored after furious scrambles and a real edge. It was that sort of challenge. It could easily have been a red for Shelby, rather than a yellow. He got away with one, and Everton's players reacted furiously. Across the other side of the pitch, Yerry Mina was down and receiving treatment, soon to be replaced by Jared Branthwaite. They had already lost Demarai Gray, with Del Alley making his Everton debut, sporting a new, tidy, haircut, Glenn Hoddle will be pleased to know. So a sense of injustice was apparent, even if Mina and Gray's issues had nothing to do with Newcastle. Gordon's lengthy treatment was undoubtedly Shelby's work, and Newcastle did pay a price. Gordon, once recovered, whipped in the free kick from the left which was headed down into the path of Mason Holgate. His shot was cleared off the line by struck the helpless Jamal Lascelles and ricocheted into the net. Justice done, as far as the visitors were concerned, but they barely got a second to relish it. Newcastle went up the other end and won a corner. Kieran Trippier took it, finding Lascelles, crestfall in just a minute before. His header struck the bar, but came down and hit Holgate on the thigh. Strange how the same two players should be involved at both ends, with equivalent results. This time, Holgate diverted the ball over his own line to local delight. Frank Lampard, on Everton's bench, looked thunder-faced. There is nothing a manager hates more than surrendering a hard-won lead so cheaply and swiftly. Particularly as he would have guessed what would happen next. Newcastle were greatly inspired by this rapid retrieval, fans and players. Everton had been the better side to that point, but it was all Newcastle until half-time. They had three good chances to take the lead. For the first, a shot was deflected into the path of Chris Wood, who will rarely get a better chance to score. He had already missed one earlier in the half, steering a soft shot straight at Jordan Pickford, but this was worse. He was six yards out, but struck it tamely at Pickford again. Whatever he might be as a target man, Newcastle need him to be a goalscorer, and soon, after that, a run by Alan St. Maximin ended with a tripper shot blocked on the right. Finally, Trippier again applied pressure, the ball falling to Jolinton in an excellent scoring position. Would he score, 
would he miss, he did neither, really. He struck the ball, somehow, into his face and fell over. A pity. If he wanted to adopt that as a party trick it would take years to perfect. Earlier, Everton had settled quicker after a couple of hopeful punts from Newcastle. Shelby struck the first, wide, after Mina had passed straight to him in the second minute. He tried again after nine minutes and Jordan Pickford gathered, not altogether convincingly. After that Everton were more compassed, although they did not create too many chances. The best of it was a shot across goal from Richarlison, a move should have been snuffed out earlier. At the other end, Mina's distribution continued to worry. Shortly before coming off, he gave the ball away again, creating a counter-attack that ended with Jolinton forcing a fine save from Pickford. Given his Sunderland past, his every involvement was loudly booed, even the productive ones.